The next video is about the Nursing and Midwifery Council and in particular about the Code of Professional Conduct. The Nursing and Midwifery Council, or the NMC, is a regulatory body who you must be registered with before you can nurse within the United Kingdom. Now, the NMC is not just a list of who can work as a nurse in the UK. They also provide us guidance professionally on how we should practice as nurses. You should read the NMC Code of Professional Conduct, which you can access online or you can access through our educational file. And the Code of Professional Conduct was published in 2008. And then most recently, they've provided an updated Code of Professional Conduct in 2015. The main themes of the NMC Code of Professional Conduct are that we should prioritise people, we should practice effectively, we should pre preserve safety and promote professionalism and trust. And if you've already seen the video about the Francis Report and the Six C's, generally the themes are the same, that we should behave in a certain way towards our patients. A quick summary of the NMC Code of Conduct is that nurses and midwives must make the care of the, the patient our primary concern, treating the patients always as individuals, that we do not discriminate, that we treat patients kindly, that we respect confidentiality, that we disclose any information that might pose a risk or harm to a patient, that we are an advocate for the patient, so we speak out if they're unable to do so themselves and we always act in their best interests that we collaborate with other members of the multidisciplinary team and support the patients to improve their health, that we maintain clear professional boundaries, that we monitor quality and maintain safety, and that we consult and take advice from our colleagues. Other things that the NMC Code of Professional Conduct says that we must do is that we must delegate effectively and manage risk and act if we feel that the patient is being put at risk, that we should report any concerns, and provide a high standard of care at all times. We should use evidence-based practice. We should keep up to date. We should keep clear and concise records. Documentation is very important. That we should act with integrity and we should be open and honest about any issues that we have. And we, above all, should uphold the profession, the reputation of our profession. In the United Kingdom, nurses generally are held in very high regard and respected professionally. And part of the NMC Code of Professional Conduct is if we follow their guidance, that we uphold the respect and the dignity of the profession. During interview, and we will touch on this again in a later video when we focus more upon, upon the actual interview, every single question you can relate to the NMC. So you can always say, I would act within accordance within the NMC and preserve patient safety or I would act within accordance with the NMC and I would be open and honest and report any concerns. So you can put in about the NMC to almost any interview question that you're asked. One of the main things about the NMC Code of Professional Conduct is that as nurses, we are accountable for our own actions, okay? So we are professionally responsible for any acts and omissions in our practice. We must always be able to justify our actions and use our clinical judgment and evidence-based practice to provide the best quality care. Accountability is integral to nursing and without accountability, we'd have no professional responsibility. So accountability is purely our professional responsibility to act in a way that we should do. Nurses are in a position of trust and responsibility and people rely on us to do a good job and care for them and they're most vulnerable. We are professionally accountable to the NMC, but we have contractual accountability to our employer and we are accountable also to law. Nurses are therefore bound to ensure that we deliver care that is safe and raise any concerns to the appropriate level. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of raising concerns. We have a professional duty as per the NMC Code of Professional Conduct to put the interests of people in our care first and that we must Protect them if we think that they are at risk. All hospitals have local safeguarding policies and you should be aware of these when you start work. Safeguarding basically means protecting patients from any physical, psychological or emotional or financial abuse. It is not always easy to report concerns, but the health and well-being of our patients must always come first. Therefore, as per the NMC Code of Professional Conduct, we must act without delay if yourself or your colleague puts a patient at risk. 
You must inform all relative, re relevant parties, normally your line manager or your more senior nurse. You must report any concerns that you have that may put the patient at risk or potential risk. And you must be accountable for all your acts and omissions of care. And the most important thing is that you always advocate for your patient. So if you have a patient that's vulnerable, that's unable to consent for treatment themselves, or they're able to express their views, that you act within their best interests. You can also find some more information about raising concerns in our educational file, or you can go online to the NMC and they have a section about raising concerns. Sometimes they ask a question about raising concerns at interview and this will be covered off in a later video. The next section is about record keeping. Now record keeping is essential in all aspects of nursing and it is important because it improves our accountability, it shows and demonstrates how decision making is made, it supports the delivery of services, it provides continuity of care so your colleagues can follow on from what you've been doing, it documents evidence, so if anything goes wrong or there is an issue or there is a problem that needs investigating, you've documented all your care. It helps identify risks, it supports audit and data collection and it helps address any complaints. So records should be legible, they should be signed and dated and timed, they should be factual without any abbreviations, they should identify any risks uh, we should not alter or destroy any records and we shouldn't falsify any records. If you want some more information about the importance of record keeping, then again you can look in our educational file and there is an NMC document that talks about record keeping. Okay, so for example, when we're applying the NMC Code of Professional Conduct to a question, we need to think about how the NMC Code of Professional Conduct guides us as nurses and what our professional accountability or responsibility is. So, for example, you might get asked a question like, a doctor wants you to give 150 milligrams of morphine, which is much, much more than the patient usually takes. It's a frail, elderly patient, and usually their normal dose is around 10 milligrams. What would you do? So the doctor is asking you to give a dose of morphine which you know is not safe. So as per the NMC Code of Professional Conduct, we have a duty to put our patients first. We must report any concerns and we must act in the best interest of the patient. So if you get asked a question similar to this, you need to think about how you can apply the NMC Code of Professional Conduct. So firstly, it is my duty to act in the best interest of the patient and be their advocate. The dose is big and it is likely that that dose might cause serious harm or even death to the patient. Therefore, as a nurse, it is my duty to ensure patient safety and not give the drug. But it goes a little bit further than that because it is your responsibility of a, as a nurse to make sure that that prescription is changed, it's corrected and that you document everything because someone else might not be as careful as you or the doctor might not have realised his mistake. You must also report this concern to your senior nurses and document everything so that you have a record that you've raised this concern and that you did not do what the doctor expected you to do. So another example might be that a doctor asks you to discharge a patient. But as a nurse, you're concerned that the patient is more confused than usual and you don't think that the patient would be safe to go home. So again, as per the NMC Code of Professional Conduct, it is my duty to ensure patient safety and act within the Code of Professional Conduct, that you, had, you are an advocate for the patients and you would act in their best interests. So as a nurse, integrally, you know that it would be wrong to send the patient home, that they're not safe to be sent home and that there might be harm or potential harm to the patient. So you would have to act in the best interest and initially you'd have to discuss with the doctor your concerns and it might be that that doctor just doesn't realise that the patient is more confused than usual and you would explain your worries as to why the patient should be discharged home. You should also document everything, you should report it to your senior nurse and if you need to escalate it to a more senior level uh, within the medical profession then you should do that also. It is important that you share information with the medical team that impacts on patient care. So. The doctor should be fully aware of all of the facts before he's made a decision as to whether the patient should be discharged. In the next video we're going to be talking about drug assessment and things that you need to know for the drug assessment for your interview.
pulled a face. <laughs> what about that? 